Dear students, under the topic Lagrange's partial differential equation, here we have problem 18. So, in order to solve this problem, first we have to compare the given equation with the standard equation of the Lagrange's form. So, the standard equation is given by... So, on comparing with the standard form, we get the value of capital P to be equal to x square multiplied with y minus x. The value of capital Q is equal to y squared multiplied with z minus x. And the value of capital R is z squared multiplied with x minus y. So first we shall write that. So next step is we have to take and write the auxiliary equation of the Lagrange's partial differential equation. It is given by. So after writing the auxiliary equation, we have to substitute the value of P, Q and R over here. So after substituting the value of P, Q and R in the auxiliary equation, we have to mark the ratios as 1, 2 and 3. And we have to check which method we have to apply. Whether we have to apply the method of grouping or the method of multipliers. So if you check, you can see that the variables in the denominator are x, y and z. But when we compare 1 and 2, we have only dx and dy. Similarly, 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 will result in the same case. For that reason, we cannot use the method of grouping. So, obviously, we have to use the method of multipliers. And in order to find the multipliers, we have to form a new ratio, which is LDX plus MDY plus NDZ. I have explained how to form the fourth ratio in, a, in my previous video lecture. So, kindly go through it before listening to this problem. So, the same multipliers has to be used with the denominator also. So, first uh, ratio, there is a denominator of the first ratio, we have to multiply with. I mean, you have x square and multiplied with. So, um, y minus z. And plus m multiplied with y square and z minus x. A plus, I am writing here, n multiplied with z square multiplied with x minus y. So, we have formed the fourth ratio. Now we have to choose the multipliers in order to make the denominator as 0. So to find the first set of multipliers, let us take the denominator of the fourth ratio and we shall write it. So what is the denominator? So it is given by this. So we shall first take and write that. So after this, we have to make the choice of the values of L, M and N in such a manner that we have to make this as 0. So if you observe these terms, we can easily think about the multipliers as so we shall put l to be equal to 1 by x and m to be equal to 1 by y and n to be equal to 1 by z so when we do so easily we can cancel the terms so uh, the idea of choosing the multipliers comes uh, purely by practice and if you see the previous problems that we have completed under this topic it will definitely help you to, uh, to make a plan how, like how to choose the multipliers. So kindly do, go through those video lectures in order to get the idea of choosing the multipliers. So I am choosing the multipliers here, here as 1 by x, 1 by y and 1 by z. So let us substitute these values of L, M and N in this denominator. So if we substitute we get 1 by x and multiplied with x squared and y minus z plus m as 1 by y multiplied with y square and z minus x plus n as 1 by z. So 1 by z multiplied with z squared into x minus y. So if you see one of the x gets cancelled over here. So after cancelling what we will be left out with is one of the x, one of the y and one of the z outside the brackets. So if we multiply them within the bracket we get so x y minus x z plus we have y over here so y is it so plus y is it and then y multiplied with x will give us x y so we have a negative sign here so minus x y similarly we have a z left out over here so when it is multiplied here we get x is it so plus x is it and then this z multiplied with this term will give us minus because we have a minus over here so minus z y Okay, so I may write it as y is it. So if you see now, this x y can be cancelled with minus x y. And x is it can be cancelled with plus x is it because this is minus, this is plus. 
and y is z can be cancelled with minus y is z. So once they get cancelled, we observe that it is equal to zero, and this we can mark as one, which we will be making use of in uh, while solving the problem further. And what are the first set of multipliers which has made the denominators as denominator as zero? It is one by x, one by y, and one by z. So therefore, the first set of multipliers l, m, and n that we choose as one by x. I mean now this is n. Okay, the um, l, m, and n is one by x, one by y, and one by z. So if we make this choice, we can make the denominator as zero. So using these multipliers, we will be finding the first solution u. Now to find the second solution v, we have to find another set of multipliers which are different from the first set. So let us see how to find them. Now in order to find the second set of multipliers, we can choose the value of l as one by x square, the value of m as one by y square, and n as one by z square. So that these x square, y square, and z square, which is outside the bracket, can be easily cancelled with them. And whatever is inside the bracket, if you add it up, definitely they will become zero. So I am going to choose the multipliers as so put l is equal to one by x square, m is equal to one by y square, and n is equal to one by z square. So what will happen to this denominator? So you will have one by x square multiplied with x square multiplied with y minus z plus m. I am going to put it as one by y square. So multiplied with y square and z minus x and n. I am going to put it as one by z square. So the left out here is z squared multiplied with x minus y. I can easily cancel x square, y square, and z square. And we will be left out with y minus z plus z minus x plus x minus y. So I observe here that y and minus y gets cancelled. Minus z plus z gets cancelled, and negative x and positive x gets cancelled, and this is equal to zero. So let me mark this as two. Now, since we it, uh, the denominator is zero, the second set of multipliers that we are going to choose is this. So therefore, we have found the second set of multipliers also. Now we shall find the solutions u and v in order to find the general solution. So first, we shall find the solution u. Now, in order to find the solution u, we have to take and write the fourth ratio that we have obtained. So what does the fourth ratio is? So I have written the fourth ratio here. Now, in order to find the solution u, let us use the first set of multipliers that we have found. For l, m, and n. So the first set of multipliers is one by x, one by y, and one by z. So when we make use of it, the fourth ratio, the numerator will be one by x dx plus one by y dy plus one by z dz, and the denominator becomes zero because already we saw this from one. So if you check out that, you will understand how it is zero. So since the denominator is zero, by the method of multipliers, we can write the numerator as zero. So one by x dx plus one by y dy plus one by z dz will be equal to zero. Now integrating on both the sides, the integral of one by x dx is log x plus log y because the integration of one by y dy is log y. Plus the integration of one by z dz is log z, and this can be equated to some log c, a constant of integration. And we know that log a plus log b plus log c can be written as log a b c. So we can multiply x y and z by the rule of logarithm. So x y z is equal to log c. And while I mean here we will take c one because we have another solution also. So while comparing both the sides, we get the value of c one to be equal to x y z so therefore we can say that the solution u is equal to x y z so first solution we have found now we shall find the second solution by using the second set of multipliers that we have already found so now we will use uh, the value of l m and n that is we will choose the value of l m and n as 1 by x square 1 by y square and one by z square. That is, we are using the second set of multipliers that we have already obtained. 
so we get we have the ratio 4 as so in the numerator at the place of l we are going to put 1 by x square dx plus at the place of m 1 by y square dy plus at the place of n we have 1 by z square dz the whole divided by we know that the denominator is 0 this is from 2 that is when we used these multipliers we found that the denominator was 0 that is here we have so this one became 0 when we chose these multipliers and so we are making use of it and therefore the denominator is 0 so by the method of multipliers we know that if the denominator is 0 we can equate the numerator as 0 so 1 by x square dx plus 1 by y square dy plus 1 by z square dz is equal to 0. Now we have to integrate on both the sides. So when we integrate, what is the integration for dx divided by x square? It is the, the integration is actually minus 1 by x. But I will show you how, how is that. Okay, so this actually 1 by x square dx can be written as integral um, x to the power minus 2 dx similarly here integral y to the power minus 2 because this is in the denominator and when we take it to the numerator the power becomes negative plus integral z to the power minus 2 dz is equal to 0 now here we will be making use of the formula integral x to the power n dx what is it it's equal to x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 so this is the formula that we are going to make use of. Now at the place of n what value do we have? Minus 2 we have. So when we integrate this the solution will be x to the power minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1. Similarly here we have y to the power minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 plus z to the power minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 is equal to a constant because after integration we have to write a constant of integration c2 and that is equal to this is x to the power what is minus 2 plus 1 it is minus 1 so divided by minus 1 plus y to the power minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus z to the power minus 1 divided by minus 1 is equal to a constant c2 now here throughout the lcm is minus 1 and when that minus 1 is taken to the right we get uh, actually this x power minus 1 can be written as 1 by x plus y power minus 1 can be written as 1 by y plus um, z power minus 1 can be written as 1 by z and this negative 1 which was there in the denominator we can when we take the LCM and when we cross multiply it will become minus c2 and anyway the constant minus c2 is again another constant which in general can be written as c2 itself we need not show make use of that minus so it will become so this can be written as 1 by x plus 1 by y plus 1 by a z is equal to c2 is the second solution therefore the solution v is equal to 1 by x plus 1 by y plus 1 by z and hence we have obtained the solution u and v and now we can write the general solution phi of u comma v is equal to 0 so therefore the general solution will be phi of what is u u we have already obtained here that is uh, previously we have obtained the solution u as x y and z so we will be making use of it here that is x y z we will substitute for u and what is v v is 1 by x plus 1 by y plus 1 by z is equal to 0 so this is the general solution for this given problem I hope you have understood this problem and with this uh, we are completing the concept of method of multipliers. Previously we learnt about the method of the concept of concept by solving by so the solving the Lagrange's equation by the method of uh, grouping. Second we learnt uh, by using the method of multipliers. Now the upcoming problems will be in such a way that we will be learning both the methods making use of both the methods in the same problem that is for one for the same problem to find one of the solution u we will be making use of method of grouping to find the other solution v we will be making use of method of multipliers so with that we will uh, we will do more problems on that concept and with that we will be completing this series of lectures 
on Lagrange's partial differential equation. So hope all these lectures will be helpful for you. Thank you.